Hey guys, I'm with my friend Lauren here. We bought 200 pounds of Cabernet Sauvignon grapes, which you can see right here. And uh, what, I'm, what we're gonna do is just kind of go step by step through the entire process of making wine from fresh grapes. So these grapes are actually from Chile, which uh, we're in Pittsburgh, PA, so it's quite a ways from Chile to PA. Um, so the, in the packaging, they sent them with these uh, sodium metabisulfite cover deals, and they're in a uh, refrigerated truck the whole way here. And of course, we went there the day they arrived just to try to minimize the amount of time from, um, they were just minimize the time they're sitting there. And what we've ended up with is really is some really, really nice looking grapes. I was actually very concerned that they would be, uh, that we'd run into some sort of mold issues or like raisin issues, but we haven't seen any of that. Uh, but what I'm doing right now is just separating the, uh, the stems from the grapes and a little secret trick, which you might've seen in one of my other videos, is just to use a, an old milk crate for that. So we've got a couple milk crates with different size holes and I found that the one with the smaller holes works good for these little grapes. Uh, but yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and kind of rub these through the milk crate, just like this. And it kind of breaks the skins as well as uh, separates the stems. And it's not maybe as fast as a crusher destemmer, but it's really economical. And uh, if you've only got a couple hundred pounds of grapes, it's really probably gonna take us about an hour to get through these. Uh, so we've done that, and I've also added uh, 10 teaspoons of pectic enzyme per 100 pounds of grapes. So we're going to have kind of two separate sets since we're splitting on this. And also um, about 40 parts per million of potassium metabisulfite since we're exposing it to some air here. So it comes out to about a quarter teaspoon. Uh, so one other thing, of course, is we've uh, rinsed the grapes just to kind of take off some of the sulfur that they might have been sprayed with in the field and kind of give us a little bit of a fresher starting point. Um, separated the stems and the grapes and I'm just kind of squishing them with my hand right now to try to just extract a little bit of juice and I'm also separating any MOG or material other than grapes like leaves and any stems that got by um, but I'm not super concerned about um, about making sure I get every single one of these crushed because a lot of times with some of these um, reds, what they'll do is whole cluster fermentation where they're not even crushing them at all. So if I can get these about half crushed, um, I think that'll be good. And I actually don't mind some of these full grapes because in the whole cluster style fermentation, it's supposed to help kind of trap those aromas that you really want to get. So we're just going to do this. And once we get this done, we'll do um, a quick reading on the refractometer just to see how we're looking. If you look at the juice, you'll notice it's not um, it's not red like you would think. And that's because it just hasn't had a chance to really extract the color from the skins yet. And that's why it's so important to ferment on the skins with the red wine, um, really to get all the, the color and the flavor and the phenols. But we're starting to look pretty good here. We'll just kind of keep squeezing it. So we've taken some readings on our final uh, mixture here, and in general, it looks within the ballpark. Um, the acidity, the, the pH is around 3.5, 3.6, which is fine. And the, uh, the amount of sugar in it, it's about 22 bricks, which is close. It's on the low end of where you might want to be for um, a big red like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add a little bit of sugar because personally I'd rather be in the 24 bricks range which would put us closer to maybe 13 and percent alcohol which is what you'd expect. So in order to add that, to add that, um, what you wanna do is 
figure out about how much juice you're going to end up with. In this case, 100 gallons here should make about six gallons of juice. And for every liter of juice, you're going to want to add 17 grams to increase that liter 1% bricks. So um, in this case, about 23 liters is about six gallons. I'm going to add about one and three quarters pounds of sugar uh, to, this, to this batch. And sometimes people would add something like simple syrup, but um, I've, in this case, since I can sort of calculate what I need, I'm just going to add um, table sugar. So I'll just mix that in really good as I'm kind of crushing up my grapes here. And once this kind of warms up a little bit, we'll transfer it into buckets and then we will pitch our yeast. So we're almost done for the day. We've got a nice uh, big yeast starter of Lauvin EC1118, which is a really reliable yeast. And you just want to make sure that the temperature difference between your yeast starter and your wine is less than 10 degrees Fahrenheit so you don't stunt it. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pour it onto the top of these four buckets. I'm not really going to mix it in. Just kind of let it rest on the top. And hopefully by tomorrow morning you'll look at these and all these scrape skins will be all inflated and it'll be fermenting really good. And what we'll then do is just punch it down three times a day. So in the morning when you get home from work and before you go to bed just give it a good punch down and submerge those grape skins so they don't get all dried out and rotted. And uh, for after about seven days when this thing runs dry then we'll just go ahead and press it.